hello everyone my name is prashant and today i'm going to talk about something about the buffer cache and flusher threads which is available in our linux so whenever you run a command like free hyphen m you see something called a buffer memory or a buffer like there are some amount of memory which is occupied by this buffer so what is exactly this buffer memory and why take a uh, some part of our uh, total ram and then in the next topic i'm going to discuss about the cache what is exactly this cache memory so let's discuss first about the buffer memory so in this topic i'm going to discuss about this buffer cache uh, what are the different flusher threads which are available uh, how the writing a page to a disk will take place uh, some generally configurable tunables which you can apply um, various kind of a threads like pd flush and k update which is used to push your data from your ram to disk uh, the new version of a uh, uh, this thread is called pd flush and nowadays the from level 6 we are using something called per bdi so let's discuss about what is the buffer memory uh, what is buffer so it says that it's used to map the pages in memory to disk blocks so it what buffer exactly is is act as a descriptor that maps maps your pages in memory to a disk blocks so generally we have a blocks of disk so the buffer used to map all those disk blocks so uh, the main function of this is because you want to reduce a disk access because your disk is a several magnitude slow as compared to your physical ram uh, which is like a nanosecond versus a millisecond so because page cache is used to reduce your disk access during the block io operation by both caching your disk block and buffering your blocks io operation which is been used later so the main aim or the main use of this is to reduce your disk access and to speed up your overall operation uh, now we have something called block io layer a buffer is in memory representation of a single physical disk block just like i discussed earlier so common operation which is generally mean happen is like uh, reading and writing your i nodes and uses uses uh, uh, block io operation manipulates sing, uh, use b read function so b, which has been used to b read function is to perform a low level uh, read of a single block of a disk so block io operation manipulates single block of a disk at a time so with the help of a b read function to perform a low level read of a single block from a disk so like i mentioned earlier uh, if you need to uh, see your buffer cache you can either use your free command to see or the proc hyphen proc mem info which is used to give the same information so here you can see the amount of a buffer cache so it's like 20 mb in your buffer later on we will see like what exactly been inside inside this buffer and how this has been populated so now discuss something about the write back cache so with write back cache in place write operation generally deferred in the page cache so like uh, by default linux use a cache which is called write back cache so means it uh, by, uh, means whenever your application uh, makes some of the pages dirty it doesn't directly write all the pages at the same time to a disk it will defer the entire operation to some time and then after that it will start pushing those pages to this so this is how it works uh, when like i mentioned about the dirty pages so when the data in your page cache is newer than the data in your backing store we call that page the dirty page because there is a difference in the page uh, better term to use is called unsynchronized where means the data which is present in your disk and whatever the data which is present in ram are entirely different so that is how we had differentiate or segregate this so there are only three condition or basically in a common scenario there are three condition which will happen uh, when these pages been being uh, flushed to the disk so the three conditions are when the number of free pages in your memory shrinks below a specified threshold uh, the kernel will start writing this dirty data blocks to disk to free up your existing memory second condition is like dirty pages grow older so when a dirty data grows older than a specific threshold to ensure that data does not remain dirty indefinitely and there are some tunables which we are going to discuss later uh, which is used to 
control these settings or these parameters and this last one is called alt demand uh, when the, when user involve a sync or a f sync system call so we can manually or on demand we can flush our pages to this these are some of the tunables which we can use to uh, configure or change the way the pages from a ram will flush to your disk so first one is called a dirty ratio which contain as a percentage of total system memory the number of pages at which a process which is generating a disk write will itself start writing out the dirty data like i said that the dirty or uh, the application it's uh, means um, when it uh, access or read a certain portion of a memory it makes that page as a dirty page so means this ratio or the this tunable is been used when the process itself will make that much amount of dirty page in your memory and it will start writing those data into your disk then we have something called a dirty background ratio uh, at which in that case when in a case of a dirty ratio like a process itself start writing data to a disk we have something called a special kernel thread which is called a pd flush or a per bdi thread in a modern uh, rel6 system which uh, in that case the pd flush thread will start writing out these pages to your disk and then we have some tunables which is used to control your dirty uh, which is used to control like the age of that page uh, in that uh, which is present in your ram so dirty expiry interval is like how old data must be uh, must be to be written out to the next time when the flusher thread breaks up and perform a periodic write so the flusher thread is the same as the pd flush or your per bdi flush so when this thread breaks up so how old that data need to be so that these data will be automatically been flushed by this pd flush thread back to the disk and then we have something called dirty write back interval uh, and this means how often it refers to the yeah, it's all refer, it all been been contrary to your uh, this flusher thread so this is referred to that how often a flusher thread should wake up to write a dirty uh, write up and uh, write data back out to the disk so the main aim is like we need to free up our memory or a ram and to free up our memory or ram we need to constantly flush these pages back to our disk so that's why all these tunables will come into play so that we do not have a we have a sufficient amount of memory and our application will run fine without any kind of a memory lagging or um, due to lack of memory like a ohm killer or all those conditions should not occur Uh, like i discussed like uh, these threads will depend upon something called a threads which is used to flush this data which these are called kernel threads so like with with the ideal version uh, the version of a kernel ideal than 2.6 we have something called a bd flush and a k update so this bd flush is a buffer based so like the aim of this is to flush out the pages from your ram to a disk so uh, and all these operation will take place in the background so it's uh, this thread what this thread will do is to perform a background write back of dirty pages when memory uh, fall below your certain level or any threshold level so like current daemon they works on your dirty pages but this or a dirty pages or your cache while this works on the buffer base so to overcome this limitation we have like to flush out your periodically flush flush out the dirty pages not the buffer base uh, we have something called a k update which has been introduced and which is used to flush out periodically flush out your dirty pages uh, the biggest limitation of this bd flush or the k update is that there is only one thread and with the number of with the, your ram increase proportionally with nowadays like we are using a 1 terabyte of ram in our system Uh, this one thread is not sufficient enough to take care of flushing out your dirty pages to your ram so uh, like i said like in a case of a heavy write which is being taken place nowadays uh this all your io wait will wait to submit this task uh, back to your disk and at the same time the other device are sitting idle because there is one thread which has been running and it has been choked out by a certain device so Um, to overcome this kind of a limitation they have introduced something called a pd flush uh, which is been introduced starting from kernel 2.6 and uh, instead of having only a one thread we have something called a 2 to 8 thread uh, which is been invoked depending upon whatever the i load so it is dynamic in nature 
and um, the aim of this is to not to assure the single disk it has been global and it can pick uh, global to any disk on the system but the major drawback of this kind of a thread is like uh, if there is one congested disk on the system it will trip out the entire PD flush thread uh, later on they have introduced something called a congestion cover avoidance mechanism to overcome this limitation uh, by actively writing these pages back to the disk uh, uh, to those queues where this is not congested but the biggest problem with this the current infrastructure is that the bottleneck is our disk whose throughput is finite so nowadays with the 2.6.3.2 uh, 2.6.32 there's something called per block device thread which has been introduced so in this case instead of disk the threads are issued with the per block device so uh, in in the case of a per bdi each thread grabs data from its per block device dirty list and write it back to the disk uh, in this way your entire write back process becomes synchronous uh, there is thread per uh, the thread one per disk and like in a case of a PD flush, they don't need to employ any congested, uh, complicated congestion avoid mechanism. And uh, there's a it overall uh, fulfill our need like to just uh, it decrease the risk of starvation and employ fairness. So like starting from this 2.6.32 kernel or in the major version of RHEL 6, uh, you will see this thread is running called per BDI. That is a one thread per of your block device. So if you can run this command and search for something called BDI you will see this thread is running in your system that is called BDI 24 okay thanks for watching this video